Welcome back to the BrickLane 500 tutorial series. In this video, we're gonna go over BrickLane 500's hidden advanced mode, Enigma. In this video, we're gonna go over the left-hand side Enigma parameters, which are focused on tonal shaping and detection modes. To access the Enigma parameters, find the dip switches and set dip switch six to on. From there, go back to the front of your unit once it's installed, long press to the left on the mode switch for two seconds, and the gain reduction meter will be taken over. To the left, the very first things will be red LEDs. And from here, you can cycle through the menus by going left, and you can change values by pressing to the right. To exit the Enigma menus, simply long press to the right or left for two seconds, and the gain reduction meter will return to its default state. The first parameter of the left Enigma menu are the stress and diode clipping types. One to five LEDs corresponds with the first five modes. So one LED is velvet, the second is float, three LEDs is smash, four is tame, and five is glue. After that, six LEDs and beyond are different diode clipping types for the clipping circuit. So six is one clipping type, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and then we're back at one, which is the velvet stress mode. The next set of Enigma controls to the left is diode hardness. This controls how soft or hard the distortion knee is. One is the softest, and then it increases hardness all the way up to six before it goes back to one. The next option in the left parameter menus of the Enigma mode is the phase and crossover modes of the stress circuit. These are done per mode. This allows you to change whether you want phase linearity or frequency linearity, and it will also select different phase relationships between the stress and the compression circuit. The first LED is with the crossover engaged and with a direct phase correlation. If I press it to the right, now with two LEDs, this inverts the phase of the stress. This is very good for parallel compression. Three LEDs will disable the crossovers, so it will be less frequency linear, but more phase linear. Three LEDs will have a direct phase correlation between the stress and the compression circuit. And if I press one more time to have four LEDs, this will now invert the phase of the stress. Again, very good for parallel compression. The next left Enigma parameter is the sidechain high frequency emphasis which is the magenta LED. This does a high frequency cut or boost in the side chain circuit to either emphasize or de-emphasize the high end. When I cycle down and, it filter, and the LEDs fill to the bottom, this adds a, a high frequency cut in the side chain, which brings high frequency emphasis. Once I've gone to the max value and I press it one more time, now it will go to the de-emphasis, which is a side chain boost in the high frequencies, the four LEDs being the most de-emphasis, and then reducing until you're back at no emphasis and no de-emphasis. The next left Enigma parameter are the detector modes with the cyan LED. The top LED is the peak detector. The third LED down is the RMS detector. The first and the LED lit is a dual detector mode with the peak and the RMS. The next detector mode is the peak detector and the long RMS detector in a dual detector setup. The next is we have a dual detector with the RMS and the long RMS detector. Then we have the triple detector mode, which is peak RMS and long RMS. And this is the dual detector, peak and RMS, but the RMS has variable attack and release along with the peak detector. And then you have the triple detector where the RMS is variable as well. The next left Enigma parameter is the crest factor. 
The crest factor adjusts the weighting between the detectors, between the peak detector and the slower arm, RMS detectors, be it the normal RMS or the long RMS detector. When the LEDs are completely full, that is even weighting between the peak and the RMS detector. Once I select down, now it's weighted heavily towards the slower detectors. And then as I increase this, it will weight more evenly towards the peak detector. This allows you to balance between whether you want very fast release and very fast punchy compression or longer sustain, more gentler release behavior. The last left Enigma parameter are the sidechain linking frequencies. This is the same as they are when the Enigma mode is not engaged. Again, you have seven choices of your linking modes to decide how you want the stereo sidechain linking behavior to act. So those are the left side Enigma parameters, which focus on detector behavior and on tonal shaping. In the next video, we'll focus on the right side Enigma parameters, which focuses on the dynamics, timing, and response.